Finance Breakers put together this video to keep you updated on what's going on in the world of finance. It brings together news, analysis, and reports from a wide range of online resources, to provide you with the most up-to-date information about the global financial markets, empowering you to make better informed and more responsible investment decisions. Before we begin, if you enjoyed watching the video, please share your thoughts by clicking the like button and writing them in the comments section below. If you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell, you will be among the first people to find out when new videos are published on the channel. So let's just get started. The S&P 500 plunged 2.8%, while the Dow Jones shed 630 points, or 2.1%. The Nasdaq Composite led the way down at a decline of 3.8%. Treasury yields spiked, with the benchmark 10-year note back near 3.9% and the rate-sensitive 2-year yield topping 4.3%. Chipmakers were under pressure Friday after advanced micro devices lowered its third-quarter revenue guidance, and warned of significant inventory corrections across the PC supply chain. Samsung reported its first profit decline since 2019, another sign of a troubled chip market. The US economy added 263,000 jobs last month as the unemployment rate fell to 3.5%. We have further to go, Chicago Federal Reserve Bank President Charles Evans said Thursday, indicating the benchmark rate will likely be at 4.5% to 4.75% by the spring of 2023. Credit Suisse will buy back up to 3 billion Swiss francs, 3 billion dollars, of debt, the embattled Swiss bank said on Friday. The move is an attempt to bolster confidence after steep falls in its stock price and bonds. Unsubstantiated rumors that its future was in doubt swirled on social media amid concern it may need to raise billions of francs in fresh capital. Credit Suisse said it was making a 1 billion euro cash tender offer in relation to 8 euro or pound sterling denominated senior debt securities. The Swiss National Bank, which oversees the financial stability of systemically important banks, is monitoring the situation at Credit Suisse. The move is reminiscent of a multi-billion euro debt buyback by Deutsche Bank in 2016, when it faced a similar crisis and doubts over its future. The S&P 500 is down 23% on the year, with a brief rally in October threatening to crumble. Investors' annual average return fell from 7.8% a year to 3.2% if they missed the 20 best stock market days over the last three decades. The market tends to see its strongest gains in the month after it hits a bottom. The S&P 500's forward price-to-earnings ratio has fallen to about 16 from nearly 22 at the start of the year. But it remains above the level of about 10 times earnings seen during the 2007-2009 financial crisis. Morgan Stanley strategists this week said the stock market faced more downside, pointing to earnings uncertainties including the stronger dollar and weakness in Europe. A Delaware judge halted a court case against Elon Musk over his $44 billion purchase of Twitter. Musk had asked the judge to pause Twitter's lawsuit against him ahead of an October 17 trial date. The judge said if the deal isn't done by 5 p.m. on October 28, she will set new trial dates in November. The two parties had been gearing up for a week-long courtroom battle, which would have determined whether Musk had legitimate grounds to sue Twitter. Twitter says it's dubious of Musk's promises that he intended to close the deal this time. Tesla's deal with Twitter was complicated by the fact that seven banks underwrote the debt portion of the financing. There are few ways for banks to get out of providing such debt commitments after signing the contract. 
most banks wouldn't want to, even if it meant preventing a loss, because backing out would reflect poorly on their investment banking business. Thousands of people convicted of cannabis possession have been pardoned by President Joe Biden. The pardons cover simple possession, which is a low-level offense, meaning people imprisoned for trafficking, sales or other marijuana charges will not be covered. Marijuana is currently classified in Schedule 1 of the Controlled Substances Act under federal law. The Rev. Al Sharpton says the move will give millions of Americans their lives back. The move fulfills one of the top priorities of the Democratic nominee in Pennsylvania's key Senate race. Marijuana Justice and the Last Prisoner Project analyzed data last year that showed many people in state prison for marijuana charges had drug sale and other convictions on their records. Virgil Grant, one of the few black dispensary owners in Los Angeles, who runs three shops, spent six years in federal prison for operating a dispensary. Deanna Hoskins, president of Just Leadership USA, said that Biden had an obligation to right these wrongs since he was behind the infamous crime bill in 1994 that paved the way for the war on drugs. BNB chain is back in operation after it was temporarily halted on Thursday. The chain has now resumed operations after fixing an exploit that allowed an attacker moved $100 million $110 million in crypto off the Binance Link chain. Initial token movements suggested that up to 2 million Bastse tokens were targeted by an attacker. Hackers made two massive withdrawals of 1 million Bastse tokens from Bastse token hub and stole assets including cross-chain swaps, bridges, and borrows. Tether, the largest stablecoin provider, has blacklisted the offending address, suggesting that the hack may have been malicious rather than benign. An NFT is a blockchain token that can represent digital things like profile pictures, artwork, and collectibles. It can also represent interactive video game items, customer engagement rewards, real estate deeds, and more. Brian Tronzo believes skeptics of the technology are informed by a limited understanding of Web3. He sees NFTs as a technology layer rather than an asset class itself. Web3 games will ultimately come in all shapes and sizes, with some adopting higher-end graphics and others opting for simpler or simpler visuals. Trunzo expects a genie out of the bottle moment in which more and more players embrace the benefits of using NFTs in games. Some games may live entirely on chain, some may not see a need for them, and others could land somewhere in between. Foreign monetary officials purged $29 billion in Treasury securities in the week ended October 5, bringing the four-week decline in holdings to $81 billion. It's the most extreme outflow since the beginning of the pandemic in March 2020, leaving total holdings at $2.91 trillion. Policymakers from Tokyo to Santiago have already stepped into foreign exchange markets to prop up their currencies. Brent futures rose $3.62, or 3.8%, to $98.04 a barrel by 1.31 p.m. EDT, 17.31 GMT, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate WTI, crude rose $4.05, or 4.6% to $92.50. It was also their fifth daily rise in a row and second straight weekly gain. Both contracts entered technically overbought territory, for the first time since August for Brent and June for WTI. OPEC Plus and allies agree to lower their output target by 2 million barrels per day. The cut comes ahead of a European Union embargo on Russian oil and will squeeze supply in an already tight market. 
The U.S. oil rig count fell by two this week to 602, according to energy services firm Baker Hughes.